Which jump do you think is more difficult? A 3 block jump or a 4 block jump? How about a 4 block jump or a 5 block jump? The answer seems obvious, right? Of course a 4 block jump is harder than a 3 block jump, and a 5 block jump is harder than a 4 block jump. If you're jumping a further distance, of course the jump will be harder. Well, what if I told you that there's a huge piece of the puzzle missing here? That there is a factor not taken into account here that has a bigger impact on the jump's difficulty than the jump itself. Believe it or not, this is actually the case. So what is this big factor that we're missing? Momentum. Momentum is often overlooked. However, in the case of multiple jumps, it is not only a huge factor in determining the jump's difficulty, but the jump's possibility as well. I think this is something that everyone knows, but doesn't really take into account or consciously realize. Picture a 4 block jump for example. You probably pictured something like this. If you're well versed in parkour, this is likely a very easy jump and appears to be nothing special. However, there is something very important here. It has one block of momentum. If we shorten this momentum to something like this, essentially no momentum, then the jump becomes quite literally impossible. Of course, right? It's basically common sense. Of course the amount of momentum plays a role in whether or not a jump is possible. In the real world though, where there isn't a clear comparison being made like this, I think the effects of momentum are often forgotten. Here's the thing, in most cases a jump's difficulty isn't even determined by the jump itself, but by the momentum given. Now what exactly do I mean by this? Well, let's use another example. Let's look at this jump, commonly referred to as the slab to coco beat. It's longer than a 4 block jump, but also not quite 5 blocks. With 6 blocks momentum, this jump is incredibly easy, just by holding sprint, pressing W and space at the same time, and holding space for the remainder of the jumps you will easily make it every time. Someone who has never even tried parkour or played minecraft at all could easily do this. If we shorten the momentum to just 2 blocks, the difficulty is now increased. Not by much, but a little bit. The main strategy is still the same, press W and space at the same time and hold space. However, you now must curve slightly in order to not over jump the momentum. The difficulty increase is very slight and the curve is very lenient. And again, someone who's never even played Minecraft could likely do this easily. However, I think objectively speaking here, there is a difficulty increase because the strategy is exactly the same for 6 block momentum and 2 block momentum, the only difference is the added turn. A very easy turn, but a turn nonetheless. Either way, at this point you may be thinking, okay, so the momentum has a little bit of an effect on how hard the jump is, but it's very minor and essentially irrelevant. Now, up to this point, I'd agree, but we're not done yet. Let's see what happens when we shorten the momentum by just one more block. You'll instantly notice that you can no longer make it with a quote-unquote basic strategy. Running and force momentum don't work, and even carpet 4.5 timing doesn't work. In order to make this jump, you need to perform a technique known as Rex 2.1 backwards momentum, followed by 45 strafe. What even are these strategies? I'll quickly go over how to do each one, but first I need to give a brief explanation on what ticks are. All you really need to know is that a tick is 50 milliseconds, and all of Minecraft's movement is based on this tick system. This means that there are 20 ticks per second, and again, one tick is 50 milliseconds, or this long less than a blink of an eye. So now let's go over Rex 2.1 backward momentum and the 45 strafe. First, to do the backwards momentum you need to jump and press S at the same time. Then, after landing, walk backward for one tick, stop holding S and press W one tick after. Hold A for just one tick and hold W and space for the rest. Already you can see the difficulty increase, but we're not done yet. Now you have to do the 45 strafe. To perform this, you must snap your neck out to face about 45 degrees one tick after jumping and hold your strafe key. You have about a 6 degree window in which you can face, meaning you don't have to face exactly 45, but somewhere around 42 to 48. This is still quite a small window, and the turn has to be completed in just one tick. Some 45 strafes are more lenient than this, but not this one. The next snap has to be done in one tick, which is again, this long, so it's not easy. So once you combine all this together, now you will make the jump. Needless to say, the difficulty level is now severely increased. The jump is still the same though, all that's been changed is the momentum. Now you might be thinking I cherry picked this jump, and most jumps don't have such a difficulty increase with just a change of momentum. So let's take a look at another example. Triple Neo with 7 blocks of momentum? Easy, just jump and slight curve. 3 blocks of momentum? A little bit harder, the curve is a bit more precise, but still easy. 2 blocks of momentum? Now it requires backwards momentum and a 45 strafe, and the difficulty has spiked again. One more example I'll give is the 7 minus 5. This is exactly what it sounds like, a 7 block gap that also drops down 5 blocks. With 11 blocks of momentum, it's easy, you just jump and hold space. With 7 blocks of momentum though, now a 45 strafe is required. This is one of the more lenient 45 strafes, and we can actually keep going. 
If we take away another block, we're left with 6 blocks of momentum, and now a double 45 strafe is required. A double 45 strafe is much, much harder than a single 45, especially the one you just saw with the 7 blocks of momentum. I won't go into detail about how to perform it, but by just viewing it you can get a good appreciation of the difficulty with just the next snap alone. There's a bit more to it, but again, I won't go into it here. So again, we have three drastically different difficulties, but the jump itself remained exactly the same. All that was changed was the amount of momentum. There are countless jumps that this phenomenon applies to, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. This doesn't apply to every jump by any means. And jumps that are effortless, like the three block jump or the single neo, the difficulty can't really be increased by just changing the momentum. Of course, this makes sense. These jumps are so easy that even with no momentum, they remain easy. You could potentially make the argument that the difficulty could still be slightly increased because no momentum requires having a sprint key, and I would support this argument. However, for the majority of players, this difficulty increase is insignificant. The other factor that can affect this so-called momentum phenomenon is jumps that require curves. So far we've just looked at jumps where you basically face straight or just 45 strafe, and the main aspect of the jump is the raw distance. I did mention the triple neo, which of course requires a curve to some degree, but it's quite small and easy, so it doesn't really apply here. The more relevant part of the triple neo is just the sheer distance. But what about jumps like this one, the ladder neo? The actual distance required is quite small. In theory, you only have to jump just over 1.6 blocks in distance. The jump is tricky though. The difficulty comes not from the distance, but the curve and strafe used to perform the jump. I would actually choose to perform this jump with no momentum, regardless of what is given, because it's quite easy to overjump with too much speed. This is obvious when you think about it, because for jumps that are just raw distance like the slab to cocoa bean, once you jump, there's really nothing more to be done. Technically you do the 45 strafe one tick after, but after that you do absolutely nothing. So since all the techniques the player uses to complete the jump are done either before jumping or in the case of the 45 strafe essentially as you jump, of course momentum would have a huge impact on these types of jumps. Momentum happens before the actual jump, the same time when the player is employing methods to make it. For jumps like the ladder neo, the main techniques are done while in the air, at which point the momentum has already been used, so of course its effects are negligible. So does this mean that if a jump has a severe curve or strafe, momentum doesn't matter? Well, not quite, because of course there are jumps where both distance and the curve or strafe are a huge part of the jump's difficulty. So a more accurate statement would be, if a jump has distance as a big factor, then momentum has an impact on difficulty. If there is also a hard curve, perhaps the jump will still be tricky even with a lot of momentum, but it will be significantly harder with little momentum. The gapped butterfly neo minus 0.5 is a good example of this. The distance is quite long, but there is also a notable curve and strafe. With the momentum setup, it's tricky, but not super hard. However, if we bring down the momentum to just one block, the difficulty is increased. Momentum can easily sneak its way into a jump's difficulty. The famous 5 block jump is actually one of the easiest jumps to do. You just press W and space together and then just tap space on each jump of momentum. However, despite being a shorter jump, the average 4 block jump is actually harder than this because most 4 block jumps are given with little momentum, commonly just one block. So to answer the initial question, which is harder, a 4 or 5 block jump, the answer is it depends. If the momentum is something like this, where the 5 block jump requires a 45 strafe and the 4 block doesn't, then you get the seemingly obvious answer, that the 5 block jump is harder. However, if we change up the momentum, giving the 5 block all of this elevation, and the 4 block just 1 block, then the 4 block jump actually becomes harder. This is the famous 5 block setup, and as I mentioned earlier, all you need to do for it is press W and space at the same time, and tap space on each jump of momentum. For the 4 block jump though, the strategies are slightly more complicated. The most consistent method is probably force momentum, where you activate sprint mid-air. You could also run the full length of the block though, but if you're off by just one tick, you'll underjump or just run off. This still isn't too hard, but it can be easy to mess up this timing, and this is likely the reason why most people who don't really do parkour seriously view the 4 block jump as quite a difficult one. In other words, with the same momentum, the 5 block jump remains harder, but we can manipulate the jump's difficulties without changing the jumps themselves, and somehow make the 4 block jump harder than the 5 block. Quite a strange thought at first. But in reality, the things we can actually do are often very surprising. Thanks for watching, folks.